So in the relapse refractory setting, the prognosis is generally um, relatively poor in peripheral T-cell lymphomas. The median survival is often quoted at about six months. That means that there are some patients who do have durable remissions to their therapy, and, and, and we, we all certainly have patients who have lived many years from their time of relapse, uh, but the majority of pe- half the patients will, rela- will die within six months of, of relapse. Um, so there's been a number of efforts um, to improve this. There's uh, four drugs approved for relapse refractory peripheral T-cell lymphoma. Two of those are histone deacetylase inhibitors like romadepsin or bolinistat. Uh, one of them is pralotrexate, which is a, um, a, a folate analog or a methotrexate analog. And then um, brentuximab vidotin is approved for uh, patients who have relapsed peripheral T-cell lymphoma that expresses CD30. Um, the overall response rate to brentuximab in the anaplastic large cell lymphoma population, remember those are diseases that always express CD30, is 85%. And some of those patients we believe um, may have very long-term remissions uh, to brentuximab alone. Um, and so that's an important drug in the treatment of peripheral T-cell lymphomas. Most of our patients with peripheral T-cell lymphomas are older. The median age is often 65 or 70 for this disease population. Anaplastic large cell lymphoma, especially ALK-positive anaplastic large cell lymphoma, happens in younger patients, often patients in their 20s and 30s. And so uh, decreasing cumulative toxicity is important, actually, for both subgroups. Our older patients often have a hard time tolerating um, therapy that can be difficult on the body for reasons of nausea or vomiting or decreased blood counts. Um, And our younger patients can suffer from from long-term toxicity such as neuropathy from medicines like brentuximab that that are known to cause neuropathy. Um, So understanding the the side effect profile and um, helping modulate um, the both the dose and intensity is important when treating these patients. I think for um, romadepsin, um, uh, which is usually given weekly, um, three weeks on and one week off, for patients who are responding and have been responding for a number of months and doing well on treatment, um, we sometimes think about spacing out their treatment and doing it every other week um, to help mitigate some of the side effects, which are usually fatigue or nausea, vomiting, and electrolyte abnormalities. With Brentuximab, um, brentuximab is known to cause cumulative neuropathy in the T-cell lymphoma population, just like the Hodgkin's lymphoma population. And so uh, most patients will develop neuropathy or, or after 16 cycles or, or so. There is occasionally patients who can tolerate significantly more than that. Um, but the neuropathy, if it develops, can be longstanding. And so at evidence of neuropathy, my personal practice is to dose reduce patients. Uh, and for patients who we know they might be on brentuximab longer term, who may not be candidates for uh, other curative treatment like stem, uh, allogeneic stem cell transplants, I consider uh, spacing out the brentuximab intervals also um, to make them not every three weeks, but maybe every four weeks so that the dose intensity is not as harsh. And maybe that, and we think that that might mitigate against some of the neuropathy, although that's all anecdotal.